How you guys doing? Chris Ignato here, and thanks for stopping by my channel. Now this video is about something that kind of intimidates me. Not because it should, but just because it does. It's called the Scudigera coleoptrata, also known as the house centipede. Now these are voracious predators, but they're not really that bad. In fact, they're beneficial to have. So I'm going to give you guys a closer look, tell you a bit about them, and hopefully they'll be a little bit less intimidating. Probably going to work the other way around now. Hope you guys enjoy the video. Check it out. Something I find pretty interesting about them is when they hatch from the egg, I'm pretty sure they have all 15 body segments, but they only have four pairs of legs. When they're full adults, they have 15 pairs of legs. So think about that. It's kind of neat. They start off with four pairs of legs and wind up with 15 pairs of legs. House centipedes range in color from brown to black or tan and actually rather pale. From the ones I've seen, they always have those three stripes going down the dorsal surface and they always have banded legs. Their antenna, as I said, are really well developed and highly sensitive. Now if you look right there, you may notice those are compound eyes. Unlike most centipedes, the house centipede has pretty well developed eyes. Good vision, but they use those long antenna for sensing chemicals and fragrances and vibrations of their prey. Now take a look at those forcipules. Those are actually modified front legs, and those are the tools of the trade. They're used to administer that fatal venom. They're attached to somewhat tear-shaped venom glands within the body itself. Now as I said, their venom isn't dangerous to humans. In fact, it's actually difficult for their forcipules, which are their, those modified front legs, it's difficult for those to penetrate human skin. But if they do so, it's going to feel like a bee sting. Okay, it is a venom. And there's a tip right there. It's not a bite. It's considered a sting because of those forcipules. They're not actually mouth parts delivering that, that venom. So, kind of neat, right? Okay, so I've tried really hard to film these centipedes feeding in the wild, but no dice there. So, I'm just going to show you some footage of a pet one I've had for a while. And, well, you know what comes next. I feel really bad feeding living creatures to other living creatures, but certain carnivores only eat fresh meat. And when I say fresh, I kind of mean meat they kill themselves. So there you go. There's those mandibles making short work of its prey right now. And believe it or not, those mandibles, and the mandibles on pretty much all arthropods as far as I know, are just modified front legs. And if you look, it'll manipulate its food with those little hand-like appendages, which are other modified legs, and using those forcipules to actually also manipulate its food and inject that venom. And then it just crunches away with those mouth parts. Now in a second, you're going to see it go after a cricket. And don't blink because it's really fast. This is going to give you an idea of how fast these things can move and snare prey when they decide to. That's incredible, isn't it? A little bit too intimidating for me, thank you very much. Okay, now I'm sure you've noticed these things are rather nocturnal. You generally just see them at night when they're hunting and things like that, or during the day if you're moving some boxes or digging around in the basement and stuff. They love to be around concrete and can spend an entire lifetime in someone's basement. That's why most of my footage is at night. Um, if I try to film these guys during the day, they just run under debris or into holes or scuttle across the floor. And I have to also admit, I feel really bad about that spider. You know, it's, I feel bad enough giving anything, feeding anything a living creature, but that's the cycle of life. And as a naturalist, you gotta get used to that stuff. Okay. Okay, now you may have noticed in several of my clips that they're pretty fast, and that's because they are. In fact, their eerie appearance lends to that. If you look closely, you're gonna notice that their front legs are actually half the length of their last pair of legs. And what that does is it allows them to step over any of the legs in front without bumping into them or tripping up. In fact, it's really similar or it's the equivalent of an invertebrate bounding, like that of a mammal. It's crazy stuff. And that's why you see them go so fast. They're literally designed to do so. But that's not all. They use those legs in their hunting techniques also. I've seen them lasso their prey, like that spider, 
with their front legs and pull them in to deliver that fatal sting. I've seen them ensnare their prey, like the cricket, with a whole bunch of front pairs of legs and just embrace it and bite in. I've seen them pounce on them and I've seen them chase them down. It's really intimidating stuff. Now, one other thing I want to say is they actually differentiate their prey. They can tell if this is a dangerous foe or not. And when it's something a bit more dangerous, like a, like a formidable spider or a wasp, they'll run in, deliver that sting, and then retreat and come back later when the venom's taken hold. Other things, like that cricket, they just come in right in and deliver that kill and start to feed. So they remind me a lot of aliens from the movie. Now, I'm going to try to hold my scuttles mostly to demonstrate that these things aren't actually that aggressive. I mean, they look scary, they intimidate me so much, but it's all looks. So, I'm going to try holding it, and hopefully I won't get stung by it. I'm really scared of this, actually. Oh my god. And this is a small one, okay? In other parts of the world, these get really big. These are a Mediterranean species. They all originate in the Mediterranean, but because of human habits and stuff, they spread out throughout much of the world. Europe, Australia, the Americas. And there it goes, up my arm. And I'm, okay, it almost got away from me. As you saw, it ran up my arm and just jumped right off. There it goes, right up my arm. There, there it is. Okay, so it's not that bad. I barely feel anything. But let me tell you, some of these in Asia and around the Mediterranean areas get really, really big. I'd probably be too afraid to hold one of them. I'm actually glad I'm doing this. This is my first time doing, holding one of these. Well, I held a baby once, but that doesn't quite count. This one is uh, possibly a sub-adult. It looks like it's got all its pairs of legs, so I believe this is actually an adult. But it's going to grow to be about twice the size and body. And with those legs, it's going to be a lot bigger. But uh, it's not that bad. You guys want to hold it? Fine. Be that way. I'm actually ha happy to be doing this. I've always wanted to do this to get over my fear. If something intimidates me or scares me, I really want to confront it the best I can. Because there's some things that just scare me so much, and there's nothing I can do about them, like life. But things like this, I can actually do something about it and confront the fear. So, not bad. It's not, as you can tell, it's not biting me. It's not acting aggressive or anything. So, uh, thanks a lot for watching, guys. I really enjoy it. Please hit like if you like my video or subscribe. And uh, feel free to comment below. And uh, until next time, I'm Chris Ignato, signing out.